OK, on to our weekly look at ice hockey in the Manchester Phoenix. Suffered a miserable weekend with back-to-back -back defeats against Milton Keynes and Slough. It leaves the Phoenix in fifth place in the English Premier League. And here's Andy Dittman now with the action from Sunday's 4-2 loss to Slough. Phoenix were keen to erase the bad memory of their heavy loss in Milton Keynes on Saturday and were unlucky to fall behind inside five minutes as Peter Poljaket shot the Jets into the lead. Phoenix fought back, and when Ed Courtney out wide found Jacko Hagelberg at the top of the slot, his bullet shot was sweetly deflected past Greg Rockman in the Jets' goal by Adam Walker. With another Jets penalty hung over into the second period, Phoenix needed just 24 seconds to draw level again. And again, it was Courtney and Hagelberg with the assist for Walker to shovel home his 34th goal of the season. With the scores tied at 2 all, the defensive frailties that have beset Phoenix's campaign in recent games reared their ugly head again. Phoenix saw a shot come back off the Jets' goal frame, and the visitors broke quickly for Kieran Long to put them back in front just over three minutes into the final session. 90 seconds later, and the Jets had again opened up a two-goal margin as Andrew Munro pounced to wrap up a 4-2 victory for the visitors. We just need to not let it get us down, because obviously we've had a bad run uh, recently in the last maybe four or five games uh, playing the top teams. We've got to make sure that we keep on it, keep try, trying on practice and uh, make sure that we have a good, good last end of the season, really. Joining me now is Adam Walker from the Phoenix. Adam, welcome as always. What's gone wrong then in the last few weeks, do you think? Um, it's mainly been a sort of confidence thing. It's, uh, there's, there's a number of things that we need to kind of work on at the moment. But obviously when you get into a sort of losing streak, the confidence can be quite low and it's, it's tough to battle out of that. Um, so we've just got to make sure that we keep, keep working at it, keep working hard uh, in practice and uh, taking it into games. And, you know, we've, had, we've been a bit unlucky actually the last, the last two or three games, uh, apart from Saturday's game against Milton Keynes. You know, we've, we've, been, we've been a bit unlucky. So, I mean, sometimes when things aren't going your way, then these things happen. You know, you never really find some luck around the net or you don't get the bounces. But, you know, hopefully that will change around for us and we can sort of concentrate the last month of the season um, on winning, winning some games and getting some confidence into the playoffs. OK, Coach Tony Hans called this season a learning curve. What do you think he means by that? Well, I mean, it's, the club's, uh, is the first uh, season for the club to be in this league. And uh, obviously, you know, I don't think too many people knew too much about, um, you know, what was what the league was about, and uh, you know the sort the sort of type of players that are in the league. Um, but you know, I think I think he's probably been a bit surprised at the standard um, within the league. Uh, it's it's a lot higher than I think what he probably would imagine it to be. So yeah, I mean, we are learning all the time, um, and you know, you you kind of learn. The, about the different ways teams play, and, and once you once you learn about that, then you can kind of sort of go after them a bit more. So, like, it, yeah, it's probably it probably is a bit of a learning curve for us this year. Okay, I mean, putting obviously last weekend to one side now, moving forward, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, there's not many games left now. About another month of games left, nine games, I think it is, uh, and obviously then it's the playoffs after that. But the, the running yeah. games that you've got coming up, do you want to get a, you know a bit of momentum in those matches to to then go into the playoffs on a high? Yeah, of course, of course, that's what you want to do, and. I think the fact that we don't play any teams above us now um, for the last month is, uh, is, is, probably, is probably a welcome boost for us because now we can sort of play against the weaker teams, as, as you may say it, but, um, and we can get some wins under our belt and get, you know, get a bit of confidence going into the playoffs because uh, we'll probably need it. Yeah, so talking about the playoffs, can you just explain the process of it to it? There's, there's loads of different sports that use this sort of system, but often they work different ways. How does it work yeah. in ice hockey? Well, the, the top eight teams qualify for the playoffs, and it works as a system where first place would play eighth, second would play seventh, third would play sixth, and fourth would play fifth. So at the moment, as it stands, we would have Basingstoke in the playoffs. Okay. And you play, it's, it's almost like football when you play two legs, so you play away and home, or home and away, um, over two games, and obviously the aggregate score, whoever has the higher aggregate score, it goes through, yeah. But there's not, there isn't like an away goal rule or anything like that. It's just if it's tied after two legs, then it'll go to uh, overtime. I think five minutes, and then you have a penalty shootout. Shoot out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, today there's been some announcements made in Speedway, and obviously mm -hmm. you might wonder why I'm asking you about Speedway. But the Bellevue Aces have said that they've got a six million pound arena mm -hmm. uh, that they're hoping to, to you know, get the proposals through and so on and build on that. And it's an idea to attract sort of more international competitions there and try and maybe attract more fans as well. Yeah. I mean, how difficult do you find it in a sport like ice hockey, which obviously can draw similarities with Speedway in terms of attracting fans in a place like Manchester when there's you know big football teams or big rugby teams, not to mention sports like athletics that have had so much money pumped into it since the Commonwealth yeah. Games? I mean, it is, it is tough um, in Manchester. I know when, when the storm was here, 
that they were uh, they were they were quite a big deal and they got a lot of fans. Um, but since the Phoenix has sort of come back now, it's been uh, it's been tough and we do advertise quite a lot, um, you know, within the city and I think I think we have to keep doing that. But it's it's something you just have to keep on and keep on and keep on about it, um, and eventually, hopefully, you know, the fans will come. But it's uh, I mean, like you say, with all the sports in Manchester, it is pretty tough to attract um, to attract people to new sports. I mean, especially the thing with Manchester is they do have Manchester United and Manchester City, course, who are yeah. two of the richest clubs in the world. So it's not it's not as if it, you know it's middle league clubs that are just uh, hanging around. It's two really important clubs. So it is it is tough. But you know, we, like we we try and do our best to to promote it as much as we can. And the crowds have been getting bigger as the season goes on. Um, even though we have we have been on a bit of a, a sticky patch at the moment. You know, the the crowds still seem to be keeping up. So that's that's a, a positive thing from our point of view. OK, Adam, thanks very much for coming in as always. Hopefully a bit more success on the ice and uh, the fans will come flooding in. Yeah, Good luck for the rest of the thanks. season. We'll see you next week.